Hi, uh, welcome to another edition of Chemical of the Month by Federal Resources Hazmat IQ. My name's Todd and this is Milton. Excellent. So we are here at the Guardian Centers in uh, Perry, Georgia, and we are going to be running a, an ammonia call. Uh, so get out your charts, get out your books, and let's, uh, let's dive right in. Let's run it. So um, we'll, we'll give a scenario based on a, a warehouse situation, cold storage building, where there has been a, a release of ammonia through the uh, compressor systems. Um, the alarm comes in, the first arriving units arrive, and they... So leaks inside the building? Leaks inside the Got building. It. So the first arriving units um, report that there is, in fact, an, an ammonia uh, release. So while we got, a, we got a report anybody you know in trouble or is it just a leak? Just a leak just a at leak. this moment. Okay. So uh, while en route, we get out our charts and we start uh, our rapid 10 second size up. So um, I start looking in this list here for ammonia. I don't see it. I go immediately to above a line where I, uh, I know I have a, a rapid 10 second size up. Hey, this is a gas. It's toxic, it's uh, flammable, it's corrosive, acid and fluorine, it's, it's re reactive, it polymerizes and it's water heavier and air reactive, air. it's heavier than air and it burns and it's radioactive and I have this whole image in my mind about what I'm gonna be finding. It's terrible. So we end up going to chart three to kind of fine tune our information a little bit, right? And so we look in the first part of the uh, chart three in the flammable clue box and we're looking for ammonia. Uh, or any part of the word ammonia, and it's not listed here. As a matter of fact, my eyes are drawn straight over here when I look into the no arrow over here to the corrosive gas clues. It's the first chemical that jumps out at me, and it's highlighted in blue on your charts on version 20. So I see ammonia listed here. So I know immediately the answer yes to this question. It puts me at a red zero. But Todd, what do we do up here with these now? So we list, the numbers. Up, we list up here for the DOT ERG guide numbers would be listed for the corrosive gases are guides 118, 123, 124, and 125. So it's a two-part thing, name <clears throat> and a number. Name and a number, gotcha. exactly right. But we really haven't found the number in the NIOSH pocket guide yet, but we're gonna get there, right? So for a red zero, we're at corrosive, uh, we're at red zero corrosive gases. Hazards are toxic, a pH blue equals flammable. So what we're cluing you in here is that anytime you walk into an environment and your pH paper turns blue in air, whatever is in air can burn. That's a, that's a, that's a safe bet to assume, no matter the, the So it either level. is or it's, it's gonna soon be flammable. Right, gotcha. and of course it's corrosive here for the, uh, the corrosive gases. It could be acid, we predict acid for above the lines, but obviously there are some that are below the line as well, or as far as basis, you should say. So we, all of our hazards are listed out here. Um, when you go through the chart, you'll see that there's fluorine highlighted, uh, acid base in the corrosive box. We have an X in the temp gun box for reactions. Uh, we have an X for the LEL meter because there are some corrosive gases that will burn. Uh, we have an X in the box for PID because we expect there to be an ionizing potential. Um, we don't put an X in the box for FID because many of these corrosive gases do not contain hydrogen or carbon and hydrogen. We have an X in the box for Freon under our Freon detector, and there's a tube or chip by Drager that uh, we, or Ray or whoever makes the tube that has a, a tube for this specific, for these particular gases. We can also find an X in the box for KI paper here, but in green background. So you may have an inorganic um, oxidizer versus organic oxidizer, organic peroxide. Our, uh, it's mission driven PPE, our rescue recon is turnouts, um, level A, level B, and um, our plumbing work is done in level A work according to our charts. And once we get more definitive information, we can even fine tune this even, even So further. once we get to the book, if we find out it's a 125, given ammonia is written in blue in the, in the hazards for the red zero play, right. pH blue, we can probably predict that ammonia is going to be the base gas and we've got a flammability, flammability consideration. Absolutely. Gotcha. Absolutely. And I notice in in the PPE for plumbing, the only thing listed there is A. Yeah, and that's, that's when, we, when you're going into this corrosive gas environment and there is no flammability issue, level A is your best level of protection in that environment, especially in an enclosed building with a roof and walls, you can, you can encounter some high concentrations. 
So this one will bring a challenge because we've got the possibility, probability of the flammability in addition to the corrosive. A absolutely. Cool. Yep. All right, pal, what do you want to know? So we end up in the reference book. And so we go to our chart seven to remind us of the properties that we're kind of trying to confirm. If we assess that it was a gas, were we correct in our assessment? Absolutely. The okay. old colorless gas, invisible yeah. gas. Invisible gas. Yep. And is this one of those gases that's a compressed liquefied gas as well? We talked about some of these. In it says shipped as a liquefied yeah. compressed gas, yeah. easily liquefied under pressure. Right. That's in the note under physical yeah, description. So just a further note, compressed liquefied gases always present a hazard of expansion ratio. Okay. When they come out from liquid to gas, they expand a lot. A lot. And that's all you need to know, There's no right? numbers needed. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, don't, don't it's memorize either one numbers. to three digits or one to four digits. Yeah. Bottom line is a lot. It's a lot more than you want. Um, how about our vapor pressure? We know it's a gas. Vapor pressure, VP, 8.5 ATM. ATM means gas, so it wants to be a gas times eight. So yes on gas, all right. right. It's always gonna be pushing out. All right. And uh, what about the vapors heavier than air? Did we say all right. we predicted heavier than air, but what's the vapor? Uh, well, we've got a molecular weight of 17. Which is less than 29. Less than 29. Even and in hey, Florida. Yep. With this one being a gas, in, the, in this book, it also gives us the relative gas density. And just kind of a review, vapor density relative to gas density air is one. This is 0 0.6. So we've got a molecular weight of 17 and the OR gas D 0.6. So going right. up, yep, right. going up, wants to go up. Right, which can be helpful in some Absolutely. instances. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so especially if there's ventilation fans that wor are working and they can- Or an get, opening in the ceiling yeah, or something. Get out some of the product for us. We predicted some uh, toxicity in parts per million. And uh, how, how are we finding 300, that? 300 parts per million. We also predicted that we would see it with our PID. PID, 10.18. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're going to be able to Magic see it. Magic number 10.6. Absolutely. So less than that, it'll see yep. it. How about the FID? FID, go to formula. Yep. Look, we need C and H. Right. We got H's, we got three of them, but no C. Yep. And, and to refresh our memory, in the, in the 10 second size up, we said it would, the FID would work. In the chart three, there was no FID. Box, you check for so the box. charts right, book yeah. verification. There we go. Yep. There we so go. That's right why we it. do it. We also have, we predicted flammability. Is there an LEO? Yes, there is. It's got an LEO of 15 percent. And huh. hey, just as a note here, it says below that it says although NH3 ammonia does not beat the DOT definition of flammable gas (parentheses for labeling purposes), it should be treated as one. Right. This kind of presents a little little uh, twist up, doesn't well, it? to I mean, me, if it's yeah. a gas and it's got an LEL, it's a it's flammable, flammable gas. Yeah, yeah, it flammable. ain't hard to understand, right. but evidently it is. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that it could burn the non-flammable uh, sticker right off that tank? Sounds, I guess it could. Sounds like it. Yeah, I guess it could. Non-flammable sticker, huh? Right, yeah. Because it means it's out ship, non-flammable. So just to remember, DOT defines a flammable gas as a gas that has an LEL that's less than 13% by volume in air. And we got 15. <clears throat> So, so from a definition DOT regulation wise, it doesn't fit in that. Right. And, and what I take it as just because it's got the green non-flammable gas label, that doesn't mean it ain't gonna burn. Right. Because look, right. if it's a gas with an LEL, it can burn. Right. So this is one of these cases, and I, well, this, is, this verifies what we've been t teaching people for years, is you gotta bring the meter in on all corrosive gas environments because you could find LEL. So Todd, what do we what do we say? Well, people say, well, you know, we can't do that because it's going to eat the meter. Well, that's a shame. That's okay. a shame, isn't it? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's kind of like saying, hey, the meter's, uh, we don't want to destroy the meter, but you go, yeah, right? Yeah. That seems a little unfair but, and unlikely. But don't they make an ammonia sensor in they an do. LEL meter? They do. So, yeah. hey, call me kooky here, but if they make an instrument, yeah. You didn't have to do that. If they make an <laughs> instrument that's got an ammonia sensor that can go in it, ammonia is corrosive, but they make a sensor to sense it, I can at least take the instrument to that concentration where I have to worry about finding Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I tested this theory. I took an LEL sensor into an ammonia environment, although I did take out the uh, um, oxygen sensor. All the other I, stuff. I, I took out the H2S sensor and the CO sensor, but I left in the VOC and the um, LEL, and I've got the meter to respond, and the meter didn't die. Okay. As a matter of fact, I used it an hour and a half later and it was working perfectly. So you said you took it in for the VOC slash PID. What was the concentration you got to? It, ma it, it maxed out. Which was what? 2000, 2000, 2000 on 2000. the uh, old MSA, our old uh, multi-ray plus. So um, again, getting back to our charts, we, um, we're going down the, the uh, flammable uh, 
list here. We predicted corrosivity. We actually predicted acid in the size up, but we've been talking about it being a base gas. And, and we mentioned earlier that its guide number is? This one's 125. 125. Now, on our charts, we highlight ammonia in blue, guide 118 in blue. But this is guide 125, which, which is, is red. red. So Except, is the pH paper going to turn purple? <laughs> it might. <laughs> and if it does, that tells us we got something going on, a right? A change is a change, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, a yeah. change is a change. Yeah, there we go. Hey, so keep in mind that in this case, even though it's a corrosive gas, your pH will not turn red in this environment. It's going to turn blue. Okay. And blue pH in air means flammability. And the reason for color change all ties back to this DOT regulation exactly stuff. Right. 118 exactly. is a corrosive flammable toxic gas. 125 is a corrosive gas. They don't mention flammability because it doesn't right. meet their definition. Exactly right. That's the exactly color right. aspect of it. All right. What do you need next? All How about right. reactivity? Reactivity. All right. So specifically, polymerize, no equal. Okay. No P by the DOT slash ERG guide numbers. Doesn't say a thing about polymerizing the incompatibilities. It doesn't say anything while we're in there. I'm going to look for the water and air. Yep. Don't see anything. Okay. Um, Excellent. Speaking of the water, you know, the solubility is 34%. Yeah, so that could be pretty helpful to us in uh, helping mitigate or... Because what's the number again that we use? Imagine the, number's 10. 10. Imagine number's 10%. So 10. less than 10 is insoluble, over 10 is soluble. And it's not an explosive or radioactive, is it? So it's not guide 161 through 166. And look, we got a couple of different guide numbers here. We get depend on the concentration, but we either got 125, 125, 125, again, depending on the concentration, or 154. Bottom line is no 160s. Right, right. 160, no 112, 112, 113, 114. No 112, 113, yeah, so 114. We, 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 so we've identified this is a corrosive, flammable gas. Lighter than air. Lighter than air. Huh. Cool. And soluble. How about that? We and even, soluble. Do we just sort of pick that up? At, at, at the, cool. So our, if we're going to make a rescue, if there's a rescue to be made, could it be made in Bunker Gear SCBA if it's a line of sight rescue? And I think this would be a, present a good argument or discussion anyway, depending on the scenario at hand. Well... Here's my answer on that. If the hazmat team shows up as the first unit, then maybe they've got a decision to make how they get dressed. Yeah. But I'm betting in 99% of the time, that's not the first rig that's showing up. That's right. That's so right. the old regular fire truck with regular fire people wearing yeah. the regular fire gear is going to show up. Right. So, what, so again, go back to chart three there. What's, what's that tell us for the rescue? TO, right? Yeah, absolutely. Red All zero, so yeah. yeah. All right, but yeah. we don't have that here. Yeah. But if we did, yeah. we, we got that cover. Yeah. So how you, how you suggest we get dressed to go in here to do battle with a chemical to, to do mitigate. the righty tighty thing? So if we're going to have to get up close and personal to the leak source, chances are that we're going to be in a higher concentration than probably our victim was at. And again, we're going to bring meters. We're going to bring up. We're going to wear our level A suits, and we're going to walk in. Now, what are our red lights in our level A suits again for this potentially well, flammable? Well, the lights. Light? If we go in, you know, our 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 yellow light for flammability is one percent. Right. Red light is two percent. Right. And speaking of that, you know, we we'll take a look back here on the level A suit. We've got the papers taped on the outside, which mm -hmm. is what we advocate. Look, we go in, and that paper on the outside of the suit turns blue. I don't care about that as right. long as my paper on the inside of my mask doesn't turn blue. Right. Because right. I'm dressed. I'm dressed as right. I anticipated the issue right. would be. Right. So could we change the environment possibly? Well, and hey, yeah. let's, uh, hey, let's do, do this. Let's take a, take a look at chart five, the old there system there. Yeah. Look at the final thing here. You know, we got some options here. Yeah. We could change the environment, change PPE. We got yep. options, yep. remote valve shutoff. So that would work. But right. look, we're, we're working this call like we got to go in there and we got to go in there and do it. Hit man. the king valve. We, we got to go, go in there and king do valve. it. Yeah. And so as we make entry, should we be monitoring all the way through? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we hit one of our yellow lights, we uh, take precautions, we get a red light, we, uh, so Todd, we, make, we make some decisions. We're walking in, we're walking in, I got 1% on my LEO. It's a yellow That's light. That's a yellow light. Yeah. All right, Todd. What do you think? That's where it should be up high, because it's lighter than air. So if I go up here, yeah. I could, you know, I can have a change in the LEO reading just right. by a couple of feet. Right. Lighter than air thing. Right, right. Okay. So think about where you're monitoring. Absolutely, it's gotta be uh, raised up a little bit, paying attention to it. If we are able to get to the king valve, don't we never hit 2% of the LEL, it's to secure the leak, and it's done. 
and it's done. I say we do. We hit 2%. All right. So we can back out. We can uh, deploy ventilation fans. We can deploy hose lines if that seems to be a reasonable choice. Sometimes so, we can't drag a line all the way through. So Todd, you're telling me we're dressed in a plastic suit. We could take a hose line with us. Oh, yeah. What Why would not? that hose line do, Todd? What are we going to use that for with the 34% well, thing? Well, it's going to hit the gas and it's going to drop to the gas on the ground. Because it mixes. It's going to absorb it. Gotcha. Right, right. Cool. So we're not pushing it, we're absorbing it. Cool. Yeah. So uh, we are potentially creating a runoff issue, but we'll I don't deal care. With that. We'll yeah. deal with that. Yeah. This is about stopping the leak, keeping the product out of Protecting the atmosphere. Protecting the area, the yeah. neighborhood, all that right. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So sometimes we've got to get in and get, get up close and personal. Cool. Yeah. So um, as we've reviewed our run of the month or the chemical of the month, just keeping in mind that, that we follow the charts with the charts we end up in the book and we let the chemical physical properties and our meter readings dictate how we operate. So here's the meters we're going to get changes on. Yep. Blue, LEL yes, yep. PID yes. Yep. Very likely PID went well long before the No LEL. doubt. Yep. No yep. doubt. Yep. All right. What else, buddy? I think we're, uh, I think we're good. All right. I think we've, uh, we've uh, managed to, to do an inside run. Uh, maybe next time we hit ammonia, we can cover an outside. Cool. Uh, and, and that. You guys in Jacksonville do strong work, man. That's what I, we were told, except <laughs> for the Patriots. <laughs> Go all Jags. Right, that's all we got. <laughs> See you next time. Take care. Later.